Williams. Yeah! That's a great job by Tatum. Williams knocks it down. Corner office again. Grant Williams, a couple of huge hoops. Welcome to Celtics Post Game Live, presented by your New England Ford dealers and Ford trucks. Kendrick Perkins, Amina Smith here with you. And the Celtics with a gritty win against the Hawks, 107 to 98. And Perk, so much toughness, so much physicality in this game. We were talking about that in the pregame show. Your biggest takeaway after this win? You was talking about physicality. I, I, I just thought the Celtics. You know what? This might have been the Celtics' best half of basketball all season long mm. on both on, from both ends, but especially defensively. We saw them getting physical on the perimeter. You saw guys switching out with a purpose. You saw guys actually taking pride in playing defense. Again, we, we talk on Grant Williams, but I can't harp on him enough, not just on what he provided offensively, but his one-on-one -on -one defense tonight was contagious across the board. But the Celtics overall, man, the way that they attack, the passion that they play with, and guess what, I mean, the, the big thing is that they got the crowd involved. Mm -hmm. They start the fans. It got loud in there. That's the type of environment that you want. Yeah, and things definitely changed after that halftime deficit. All right, let's send it out to Abby Chen, who's at Derek White right now. Derek. What was said at halftime? You guys came out, put up 31 points, held them to 13 in that third quarter. Yeah, um, we didn't come out with that defensive mindset that we need, um, but we figured it out there in the second half, got a lot of stops, and we were able to get on transition and get some good ones. So um, we know we got to be good on that defensive end, and uh, we, we showed it in the second half. With Jalen Brown's injury, and then when Jason Tatum went off the floor in that third quarter, you took over the scoring load. Was that the plan? Um, I was just trying to be aggressive. Um, was able to get some good looks. I mean, um, I'm just trying to figure it out each and every game, and um, everybody telling me to be aggressive, so that's what I was trying to do. How much more comfortable are you from game one to now? Yeah, it's getting better each game. Um, obviously, it's going to be ups and downs, but um, I like the team. I like where we're going, so it's going to be good. Yeah, a lot of smiles tonight. What does a win like this tell you about your new squad? Um, I mean, defensively, um, if we can be one of the best defense teams in the league, um, so we just got to hold our hat on that end, and good things will happen offensively. So um, we got, what, 18 games left, and got to get better each game. Derek, thank you. Congrats. Appreciate it. 18 points, two rebounds, and five assists for Derek White. However, in that third quarter perk, the Celtics exploded for 31 points. What changed out of the half? You know what? They didn't settle. Look, look, at, the, look at them getting to the paint and attacking. And then when you put your head down and attack, one, play inside, outside basketball, good things are going to happen. But I thought they made it an emphasis to make sure that they touched the paint. And they didn't let the Hawks off the hook offensively. Defensively, I mean, I don't know what Ebay Yudoka did, said at halftime. I don't know if he called them out or whatever he did. It's, it lit a spark, and it was a great spark. Again, I mean, I'm going to say it. That was the best half of basketball I've seen the Celtics play. And you were scared to guarantee the win. You were scared. I wasn't scared to guarantee the win. Look, I, I told you I'm a little bit superstitious, so I didn't want to jump the gun on it. But they proved me wrong in this one, where I could have come out and said that they were going to get a guaranteed win in this one. Let's bring in Scal, who's live inside of TD Garden. And Scal, we were talking about that second half and how the Celtics, they came out with a different energy. What did you see that change when they came out of the locker room? Wait a minute, wait. What happened at halftime? Perks guaranteed it and you wouldn't go there? No, I mean, no, what no, tell no. Pre-game no. show. Pre-game show. He said he gave me a guarantee to win, but you know me. I'm a little bit superstitious. <laughs> yeah, Sal, let me ask you a question. If I, right. if, I say, if I say the Celtics, you know, they got the upper hand, they got the physicality, they got the better team before the pre-game show, and I'm saying all these things, and, they say, and I say – they should probably go out here and win this game in, in great fashion. So I called Amina Bluff to see if she was going to guarantee the win, and she didn't want to jump off the court. See, you see, Perk said should probably. You see, you see how he worded that yeah. right there, Scal, yeah, to yeah, save yeah. himself. He gave himself an out, right? <laughs> but he's right because what we saw in the second half was the Celtics pick it up with their like the identity of the team. I think what happened is when Jalen Brown went down, they lost a lot of wind in their sails. Like it just it just threw them off for a second. I don't know why, you know, like. 
like it's part of it. It's part of the NBA guys go down, but it, you could just tell like they lost their edge. And Atlanta, you know, kind of feasted off that. But in the second half, whatever it was, no excuse mentality. Uh, what Perks said, maybe uh, Eme, you know, got into them a little bit, but their defense was a completely different level. And we know with the Celtics, when they guard, everything works out. They, it works out on the offensive end, the ball movement. Everything works when they play defense, and that's what they did in the third quarter. And Perk, Jason Tatum, 33 points in this win. How did he really step up as a leader out there on the court? I, I thought he did it just by, by attacking one in the third quarter. But, you know, I always look at the little things with Jason Tatum. It always comes down to me, me seeing his energy and his tenacity and him firing up the crowd. But I thought he did a great job of trusting his teammates. Like those seven assists, those seven assists were huge. And, and a few of those assists came at key moments, like the bounce pass to the corner to Grant Williams. Like Jason Tatum, when he has this, this certain type of level now that he knows about that he could take it to the next level. Like he has the mindset to, that knows that you know what? I'm ready to go toe to toe. And I love it for the simple fact that anytime, I, again, anytime another young superstar or star come into your home, you got to protect your house. And he did that. What I'm seeing from Tatum right now is. Like, he's empowering to his teammates. He's helping his teammates get to spots where he wants them so he can make plays for them or make plays for himself. He's cheering on his teammates, understanding when Grant Williams makes a corner three or Al Horford, when they were sitting two guys in his lap and Al Horford takes a shot and makes a shot. You could see him physically, like, actually, like, getting pumped up when other guys are having success because I think he's starting to get to the point now where he's playing on a different level. When, when you're a legendary player, you're not playing just to have a good game. You're playing for next level stuff. You're playing for the bigger, the bigger picture, for growth, for you know, for winning an NBA championship. I think Tatum is now getting to the point where it ain't about money or my first team All NBA or any of that stuff. It's for him. He's probably already thinking like I want to be measured by how many championships uh, that I win. And that, and I think that when I'm, I'm starting to see that, is I can't say that I, I, I saw that at the beginning of the year. And I've, I, I've and it's been, it hasn't happened just overnight. It's been slowly happening. But tonight was a night where I felt like he was really empowering to his guys, knowing that for the Celtics to take it to another level, everybody has to eat. Everybody has to chip in. Everybody has to knock down shots. And everybody has to be in the right place, the, the place that I want you on the floor. And speaking of players being in the right place, Marcus Smart all over the court, 16, 6-4 six out there tonight. Scout, how did Marcus Smart impact this win? He, took, he did it on the defensive end. That's what happened. And then he has a high basketball IQ as well. And they started posting up guys like Kevin Herter or when he had Trey Young on him starting the third. But I, I, Smart is now attacking to the – where if Clint Capella is out on the perimeter, he's going to get downhill. He's, all, he's looking at it from a game plan perspective, not just I'm just going to go out here and just, you know, shoot 12 threes. So, yeah, I think the IQ of the Celtics have just gone to a completely new level. And I, I think it's been happening over the past – Last month or, or, or two months. I agree, Scott. And, and, and the great thing about Marcus Smart is that he didn't settle. He didn't settle for those ill-advised threes. And at times, they were there. Like, we usually see him take that pump fake, and, and if a guy, you know, if he get a guy to bite, he'll sidestep or, you know, take one step in. Tonight, he was attacking. And like I said, when you attack the paint and you get into the teeth of the defense, then it opens up so many other areas. But defensively, you know, him diving on the floor for the loose balls, him doing other things to that nature, chase down blocks and everything else. I mean, that's who Marcus Smart is. But again, Marcus Smart in our eyes, I mean, to, to everybody, is, is a role player. Role players play better at home, right? And not saying that Marcus Smart don't have the guts to carry it on the road, but again, you're developing habits come postseason time when it matters the most. If you can't tell me, Scal, you was in the... You can't tell me that the energy didn't have those guys on 10. 
Yeah, for sure. The, the, when they started playing defense and the crowd started getting involved, it makes it tough. It's tough. You saw how many shots went in and out for Atlanta. It's tough to make shots in this building, and this is a fraction of what the playoffs are going to be like, especially thinking about all the matchups in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, this place is magical. That's why, Perk, you should come on out here and do all the pl uh, playoffs with us, Perk. Exactly. I like, how you, Zoom. I like how you loop that in, Scal. We're trying to get Perk out here to Boston. All right, thanks so much, Scal, for that insight. Let's send it out to Abby Chin, who's with Emo Doka right now. Emay, first of all, any updates on Jalen? Uh, obviously, uh, rolled his ankle. He tried to give it a go in the back and wanted to try to get out there and play. We thought better of it and look at that big picture where we're at in the season. Um, you know, be wise and take, take it off, and uh, we'll see how it is over the next few days. Ended up working out. What adjustments did you make for that second half and the huge third quarter? Well, obviously, our physicality wasn't the best to start, and that's been a few games in a row now, so we showed them some clips of that. Um, said, let's get back to who we are identity wise and up to physicality. You know, simple plays like Trey Young just coming off too clean. Um, you know, it might have been a little bit of shell shock from Jalen going down in the rotations and lineup getting tweaked for a minute, but credit to Aaron, Peyton, Dan, uh, everybody else, Derek, that came in and were ready to roll. And so that's what we said to the team. Guys were professionals, stayed ready. Um, took us a little bit of time to get used to it, but second half, that's who we are, giving up 33 points only. That has been a question for this team, scoring without Jalen or Jason on the floor. How nice was it to see Derek White step up in that role? That was great, and, and like I said, it felt like it took us a minute to get our rhythm back offensively as well. You know, we were actually defending pretty well most of the first half. Obviously, 37 points in the third and second quarters is too many, but offensively, it was hurting us, putting a lot of stress because we were guarding well enough and not scoring. So it took us a minute to kind of figure out what we were going to do as far as that, but to have other guys ready to step up is huge for us, and that's what Derek brings to the team, a guy that can, you know, distribute, score the ball, and do a lot of things. And so he was huge tonight, obviously, with Jalen being out. You may thank you. Congrats. Thank you.